and in three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Torch Snuffers Podcast. I am your host, Colin Connors, here with a special preseason look at Survivor Cambodia Second Chance. But I'm not here just by myself. No, 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 no. You get to listen to other amazing voices, including the super awesome and beautiful Stephen Lehman. Oh, thank you, Colin. The always humble yet majestic Jack. Hey there. Everyone's favorite wacky uncle, Alex Cash. Woo-woo! And Elise Anderson, who's the girl for tonight. Hi. <laughs> Great title, Colin. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we got a lot to cover. I mean, this is Survivor Second Chance. This is something we've all been waiting for. It's another all-star season. We've got a great cast. And so here's what's going to go happen, listeners. We have a thing set up on the website Fantaser. And what it is is you get to do drafts, and you get to play Survivor online. Well, it's like a draft. It's like fantasy football, but for us Survivor nerds, so we don't feel left out. And what's going to happen is... Me, Steve, and Alex, at least, we're all going to be drafting people, and we're going to be talking about the players as we draft them and, you know, saying, you know, who are they going to be going against and what's their strategy going to be for this game and all that other fun stuff. Now, there is some stipulations. As you listeners know, we do have winner picks, and we are locked in with our winner picks. We have to pick our winner picks first, and as we pick them, we got to justify why we think they're going to win. We're also going to talk about the tribe breakdowns and a few twists. All the twists we talk about have already been spoiled quote-unquote, by CBS, but if you don't want to listen in, just be sure to turn out towards the end of the podcast. So anyways, guys, without further ado, let's get this going. I'm going to hit the button on the little Fantaser team. Do you guys all have Fantaser brought up? Everybody? Yep. Yep. I have it okay. open. Yep. All right, I'm going to hit start draft, and it's going to begin. Okay, start draft, and let's see who's going to get to... Wait. It's oh. asking me if I really want to start it. Do I really want to start it? Yes, I do. Okay, let's get this going on. <laughs> Okay, so draft in progress. Pick one. It's Steven's Staggering oh. Goddesses. Steven, you're up first. Go ahead and pick your person. Um, okay, so uh, I had this pick uh, at the end of last season, as we were slated to do. Um, I actually don't remember who I initially picked, but I wound up going with uh, this person because uh, I was a big fan of them in their original season. I thought they really showed a lot of fighting spirit, and I really think the fact that they're coming back I really do think they can take the whole thing this time. Um, so with that being said, and without any further ado, my first pick is going to be the one and only PG Law from Survivor China. Woo! Now, what makes you think she actually has a shot to win? Because even Probst is saying uh, PG's got no well, chance. Th- well, th- no disrespect to Probst. Uh, he selected five out of the ten women as the five people who could not win. <laughs> um, so, and I don't necessarily take his word as gospel. I think PG was always a very aware player. I think she was very smart. She didn't necessarily have the best social graces in China, as we saw with her sort of not being afraid to speak her mind and sort of pop off at folks like James and people who she didn't necessarily agree with. And I think now that, what, it's been seven years or so since China aired, um, I think now she's definitely, I don't want to say she's necessarily matured, but I think she's definitely gotten a lot more experience. And I think she'll be able to use that to her benefit. And I think ultimately it's going to give her the win. So. Okay. Now she's on a uh, Takia. What is she going to be looking for in terms of strategy? Who is she going to align with? I believe from what I remember PG saying pregame interviews, uh, I believe she said there was, she wanted to align with folks like Spencer and Shireen and some of the other newer folks. So that's what I, if I understand that correctly, okay. which from a personal standpoint, I'm not crazy about because I'm more partial to the old school folks, but you know, Okay. Well, that's very fair. Um, I will say this. I, I'm going to throw a little comment. I think she does have an excellent shot at winning this game because she is old school and she's under the radar. I think, you know, they use the term Amber Alert sometimes to describe these players. I think she could be in some ways an Amber Alert. Anyways, without further ado, go ahead and make your pick and then we can get to the next player. Oh, I, I made it. You made it. Okay. Yep. Now I just wait on the website. I believe your pick is next, Colin. Okay. It is. It says it's my turn to pick. Yay! So I'm going to go ahead and click on that button. So I'm picking the person who is going to win. Like, you have this, ah, thing. I mean, come on. Let's be real here. I'm picking Vetus from Survivor Blood vs. Water. Now, as you guys know, Vetus played a fantastic game in Blood vs. Water 1. Um, he was overshadowed by Aris, and I actually think he has the experience from that to kind of play a little bit of a low-key game. Um, 
he also, I feel like people like Werner and Joe and all of them, all the other males have some sort of target on their back already. Are they going to do something to kind of draw it out? Whereas Vetus is going to, you know, take the yoga approach that we saw his brother make and use that to kind of, you know, leverage his way through the game. I also think that he he's going to be good at immunity challenges towards the end. I don't know. I picture him lying low just throughout most of the game and then striking when the iron's hot uh he will cause a little bit of trouble because he seems to have a little bit of that villainous nature but i think he's going to contain it enough and let me be frank he is going to win and that's what matters so okay i picked vetus does anyone else want to throw any other comments in about vetus um i just i am uh, uh, vetus is a slime ball um i don't but that's he's why like, he's gonna win because he's a slime no, ball no but 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 the problem is the fact that in blood versus water no one caught on because he was a newbie. The mm. fact that he's coming back, everyone's going to be on to him, like, you know, white on rice see, or peanut butter on jelly, and I don't see him lasting long. What's interesting is I, I, I kind of see where you're coming from, but I feel like everyone, every player has baggage that they can look at. And diff- you see what I'm saying? Like, everyone I, can go, well, Sari flips a lot. Shireen's crazy. I feel like everyone has but, enough baggage to where it kind of cancels each other out. The problem, the problem is when you have someone who is so so perceived as like this sort of skis ball who manipulated mm-hmm. people and just I don't want to say he was a sociopath but like he definitely exhibited signs of that when you have that it just makes it hard to go into a game with returning folks and say like hey you can trust me <laughs> I, I don't know well we'll see we'll see okay so up next I believe is the wonderful Alex Cash now Alex who are you picking today is Alex even all right picking? it's my turn to pick so yep. I so my winner pick <clears throat> is going to be Monica Padilla. I, so. I'm just going to say that a woman is going to win this season because let's take a look at all of the other returning player seasons that we've had. Amber, Parvati, Sandra, and Cochran, who in Sandra's words is like a girl. Uh, hold on, hold on. Tyson, Boston Rob. Danny, Denise. Yeah, Danny, Denise is a good one. <clears throat> So, well, but th- th- those are all one or two returning yeah. players as opposed to half or more. Half or more. So the only half or more returning player to win it would be Cochran in terms of guys. Right. Okay. But So, so my, my point is, is that uh, Monica has proven in her original season that if faced with the opportunity to make a, make a move, she will do it. Now, she did it a little bit too late, but as opposed to some of the other people who will probably get passed over for threats, she has a shorter distance to go from making a move too late to making a move at the right time versus people who uh, played the game 10 plus years ago and Mm -hmm. didn't know when to make a move at all and things like that. And also, Monica has the perfect cover. She played in a season with Russell, who got all of the airtime and therefore... Who is Monica? And the answer will be the person sitting in the final three. Final three, all right. My one question about the whole Monica, and I even heard this like Monica PG, the Amber Alerts this season, is I feel like every single second chance you're out there has seen Heroes vs. Villains, All Stars, whatever. So do you think they might actually want to get rid of the Ambers? Because if I'm out there, I'm going to go, hey, listen, Joe, hey, listen, Jeremy, I know you want to target me because I'm Spencer or whatever, but these Amber girls always win. So let's take them out first. You don't think that's going to happen? They, there is a definite possibility because, I mean, if you think about the shift from Blood versus Waters 1 to 2, with 1, uh, the the couples got targeted immediately as soon as the merge happened. And in the second one, the pairs banded together mm-hmm. to take out singles. So you're so saying there might, is a precedent. We might see that switch, but it's it's taken a long time for that switch to happen. So it'll be it'll be fun to see happen if it does, but I'm less... I'm less certain that it will. Okay. So go ahead and let's pick your Monica and let's move on to the next person. Mm hmm. Yeah, All right. that's me. All right. It's the wonderful Elise with the team Dragons. All right. So who are you picking and why are they going to lose to Vetus? Yeah. <laughs> so I am picking Steven Fishback. I think he's a very smart player. I'm a huge fan of Token Chain, so I was very interested to see how he's going to do this time around. Uh, we saw JT play again and didn't end up so well, so I'm hoping he will have uh, 
seeing what happens there and mm-hmm. learn from it. And I'm just kind of excited to see him play. I know he probably has a target on his back because of RHEP, but I'm hoping he can figure something out, so I'm picking him. Well, Steven, yeah. do you want to talk a little bit more about the target on Steven's back? Because to me, it's too damn big to overcome. But I don't know. Let, let, I want to see a dialogue or hear a dialogue between you and Elise. <laughs> so, Steven on Steven. Um, <laughs> Steven on Steven. I... <laughs> I'm a big Fishback fan. At one point, he was my favorite of all time. Um, I, I've, I've grown not as fond of him, but I still I think he's a great guy and great player. Um, I think if he doesn't get into the right group early on, he could be in trouble for that. I think it's sort of uh, your odds are either up or down, you know, depending on what side you land on, essentially. If he gets into a good alliance early, I think he goes in for the long haul. If not, I think he's an early boot, and I'm hoping it's the earlier, not the latter. Well, and uh, Steven happens to be in Tribe Bayon. By, is that, that's how I say it, right, Bayon? I'm not I, sure. I couldn't tell you. Okay, well, it's Bayon now. We're official. Okay. What do you think he's going to do in that tribe? Well, I'm hoping that uh, since he's on a tribe with people like Cass, that he wouldn't be the first person booted just by reputation alone, and that will buy him three more days so that he can figure something out. Uh, we saw him in Token Chains. He was pretty good at managing alliances with both JT and Taj. I think he can play under the radar. It's just a matter of will the other players let him. And that's very fair. That's very fair. All right. So go ahead and make your pick, and let's move on to. <coughs> Sorry about that. And let's move on to the wonderful Jack. Now, Jack. Jack gets to pick two people because this is a snake-like draft. Um, but the first one of those is going to be his winner pick. So, Jack. You get the floor for a little bit. You get to do your winner pick, explain why they're going to win. We're going to argue here a little bit. And then you get to pick another player. So my first pick will be my winner pick that I made a few months ago. And my winner pick was Sierra Easton from... Which is dumb, but anyways, keep going. <laughs> all right, you picked Vitas, so we can uh... argue all day about <laughs> how you're right. wrong and I will be correct. Right. Um, but she's from Blood vs. Water. And yeah. my logic for picking her back then was that I viewed the season as a lot of, not alpha males, but like alpha personalities, people that might want to take control. And Sierra has a good experience and reputation of dealing with that because she had to deal with her mother who was trying to control her and a lot of returning players. And she did pretty well in her first season of Blood vs. Water. So I think that a lot of people are coming back for their second chance and they have to figure out how they're going to play because they screwed up the first time. But I think if Sierra takes a similar approach to how she did in Blood vs. Water, she could do very well in this season. Okay. So that would be my pick. Well, then who do you picture her working with? Like, what is her strategy? Because just from my point of view, I see someone like Sierra on my tribe. I'm like, okay, cool. She's the first one gone because she backstabbed her mom. You could say that, but she didn't really wrong anyone besides her mother. Like, everyone else was, like, taking control of the game and she was going along with it. You're not going to suspect Sierra as someone who's going to, like, try to turn a whole tribe against you or manipulate you. Because well, she's not like a dominant type of player. She's more of a like a, a Robin to someone's Batman. Well, and who do you think she's going to work with on her tribe? Let me pull up who is on her tribe. All right, <laughs> as she um, goes on her tribe. All right. So I think she could work well with Monica, like the girl connection. She could mm-hmm. team up with Steven, who I think is going to be like a more type A person on that tribe because he has all the connections from doing RHAP. Um, Tasha could be another person she could work with. Or just, I, would I think she's Sierra very Tasha amiable. Lines. Between she's not like someone who's gonna, no one's gonna like immediately dislike her. I think she's gets along with a lot of different types of personalities. Okay. So. And does anyone have a rebuttal to that? Because I think she's kind of gone pre merge. All right, Stephen, hop in there and give a quick rebuttal. Um, so just to touch on the voting at your mother, th- voting on her mother thing, I think my my big glaring, I don't want to say glaring, but like my big problem for lack of better phrasing with Sierra is that she claims she voted out her own mother to build trust with the other folks in her alliance and to me if you're voting out your own mother to establish trust with me if anything that's going to do the opposite because like if you're in my if you're in my alliance and you don't vote out your freaking mother over me like I get that like it's yeah. your mother yeah I don't know I I think Sierra might be seen as too I don't want to say mousy yeah. but like too much of a Whoa. schemer well, as PG could survive the hunt for the Ambers early on, I don't think Sierra does. And that's if that hunt takes I think, place. I think the problem with Amber Alert is that Amber Alert sort of refers to a girl who was 
I don't necessarily say irrelevant in her season, but someone who's more under the radar. So someone in this cast, maybe like a Kelly Wentworth or yeah. – I think you could maybe even classify Monica as a uh, Amber Award. Okay. People like PG Sierra, I'm not so sure because they made it all the way to Final Five and they've had pretty big edits. So, all right, well we'll see. Okay, Jack. Now go ahead and let's pick your second person. All right, I do have back-to-back picks, so I am perusing the cast list to see who is left and who I shall take. And I'm going to make a concerted effort to pick people of both genders okay. because in the past I will frequent towards the female. Um, Which is funny because females are probably going to dominate the season given history, but we'll see. I mean, men are going to have to do something, hopefully. Yeah. So if, if Steven's happy, they'll all be gone early, but we'll see. Looking at the men, we have not the greatest selection to choose from. <laughs> but I will pick someone who I am sure will spark serious conversation and arguments from everyone else in the podcast. But I'm gonna pick Spencer Bledsoe. Well, you're okay. You're an idiot. So we're moving on. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Actually, I, I want to hear you talk about Spencer because I have some, I have some things to say about Spencer. They're not all negative, but yeah, let's go ahead. Let, what do you think Spencer's gonna do this season? Is there any way he doesn't get booted? Or let, let's talk, let's just talk about Spencer. All right. So I just locked in my Spencer pick. So I think he has the advantage of he knows a lot of people. Hello. Which are people that he worked with. Okay. Oh no, Jack is cutting in and Spencer? out. Oh no. Okay, so we are having some mild technical difficulties with Jack. Um, let's see, we're going to give it a minute. All right, am I better now? There, yes, you are yeah. much better, and yes. I missed you. Okay. All right, I'll just read back because I don't know where I cut out. Yeah, just so... um, start Spencer all over again. Okay, so I think Spencer has the advantage of knows a few people person like really well from playing with them coming back in the season because he played with Wu, Cass, and Tasha. I think that was it. Mm-hmm. That are back. Um, he also has the advantage, in my opinion, that he was sort of an underdog. Well, he wasn't underdog his entire season, where he was never in the majority. He never really had the opportunity to, to like backstab or cut someone's throat. So, so no one's gonna be like, "Well, Spencer's this master manipulator. Um, he's gonna backstab me as soon as he gets a chance." Because he didn't do any of that, because he never had the opportunity to do anything except like try to win immunity challenge or to try to find idols or suck up to Tony. So I well, think that he could, and he has the ability. I don't know. I think he could do well. I think he do well. Alex, do you have a rebuttal to that? I haven't heard you speak in a while, and I miss your voice. Um. Why is Spencer not going to do well? Um, Spencer isn't going to do well because he's very much known as someone who can do well that and i think that although he did a lot of growing up uh during his during his first season the reasons that jeff probst initially said spencer has 0.0 percent chance of winning still sort of apply he still has that capacity to think he's like uber smart and rub people the wrong Mm -hmm. way and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to piggyback on that, which is the fact that Jeff Varner in his pregame is like, Spencer has got to go. we got to get Spencer out of here. Spencer's crotch framing. Spencer's one of that. And that's the thing is I feel like Spencer just naturally puts a target on himself through his actions. Now, Jack, I- I'm kind of with you. I don't think Spencer's the first person voted out. I don't think Spencer's the fifth person voted out. But I think Final Nine comes around, and that's when I think Spencer goes. I do think a lot of people are writing Spencer off as a pre-merge person. I don't see that. I see no reason to get rid of Spencer pre-merge. Yeah, right. I think it, it's early merge is when like the most focus will be on him. Exactly, and that's when I think he he'll probably come. Up to, he will have his comeuppance as Ty that's would like say. That's like the catalyst of whether he gets voted out immediately or you can make a deeper run. True to that. Okay, so now let's move on to Elise. You have the next pick. Ooh. Now I'm kind of debating between who I love and who will actually do. Well, <laughs> so um, I definitely want to choose a girl on my team. Of course, girls are amazing and stuff. Of course, and I know y'all are probably gonna take them if I don't win now. <laughs> but um. Oh no, Elise, are you gonna take who I think you're gonna take? <laughs> who do we have? She's All right, gonna Elise, do. Oh, we gotta move fast. Got a lot to cover. Just pick okay. someone. Do it. Just do it. Fast. Don't let your dreams be dreams. I think I'm going to have to go with Kimmy Kappenberg. I think that'd be so no. much fun. No, oh, like Kimmy you took Kappenberg. And that is Patrick's current winner pick, Kimmy Kappenberg. Okay, 
Well, is he I not think, doing the draft? So I yeah, he's not doing the draft, so you can take him. Perfect. Uh, okay. You have a minute. What, I think you're stupid for picking Kimmy, for lack of a better <laughs> word. I'm going to Donald Trump you and call you a big dummy. <laughs> what is it that makes you think that Kimmy Kaffenberg isn't voted out second? What could I, you possibly bring? I think Kimmy Kaffenberg, well, when I wanted to pick her because I'm really excited to see how she's uh, played since, because her season was a long time ago. I think people won't be seeing her as a threat. I could see her, uh, it'll be interesting to see how she fits in with these people. I think she may get isolated, but I'm willing to take a chance on her. I think it'd be great if she could work uh, with the other, some of the other girls and make something happen. And I, I'm just really excited to see her play again. So, yeah. The, okay, Stephen, why do you like Kimmy? Real quick, give me like 20 seconds why um, I like Kimmy. I almost 100% of it is sentimental reasons. Loved her in Australia. Okay. I thought she was a, yeah. <laughs> She's not a good player. Like, let's just say that right I, now. I don't she's necessarily not a good player. But I think in a season like this, you don't necessarily have to be a good player. I think she was <laughs> old school enough that people remember her only for the chicken fight. Uh, I think that because of that, she definitely can lay low if it's Kimmy. I mean, to the extent that she can. Um, and if she does, I think she's in for the long haul. I'm, All right. I'm excited. Okay, good. Now go ahead and finalize that pick and let's move on to Alex. Because I think Alex is like, going to say something a bit more intelligent to my male-based... <laughs> Survivor mind. And I mean, let's be clear. All you listeners out there, we don't like to mince words. A female is probably going to win this season. Just like we didn't mince words with the whole Cochran's probably going to win during Caramon. But still, we like to have a little bit of fun. And let me say something. A female is going to win, but that female is not going to be Kimmy. All right, Alex. All right. It is my turn to pick. And with the eighth pick in the draft, I am picking not someone I think is necessarily going to win, but someone that I think will be delivering on the confessional front and therefore will be delivering my fantasy team a bunch of points. Jeff Varner. Fuck him it. Two in a row. Uh, God, my picks uh, get two in a row. I'm loving this. All right. Um, I'm going to veto that real quick. Hold on. I can (laughs) can assign you a player, actually. Wait, did you actually confirm me? Did you already? Oh, you confirmed it. He confirmed it. I was going to veto it. I was seriously going to override your pick. I was actually about to do that. Wow. Just remember, guys, I do have that power because I am the host of the league. I can kind of do whatever I want. And I'm the host of this. Okay. So I think Jeff's going to do really well. I think he's in a perfect situation to do well. But, Alex, this is your pick. Let's talk about Jeff. Yeah, I think he's going to do really well too. I I think that he has had a lot of time to think about it, and he has an engaging personality – that has come across through his campaign and his preseason interviews that he is going to going to use to you know try to insinuate himself into his tribe and I think he's going to do a good job of it and he's going to deliver some confessional gold. And, and like you said with the growth, I completely agree with you on that. And just kind of listening to him talk now, like even back in Australia, he was one of the few people that was playing kind of modern day survivor. And now my thing is if he can get over that hump out of being out of shape or whatever and you know not being one of the first two or three boots, I do think he's going to go exceedingly far. Do I think people are going to cut him at four or five? Most likely, but I do think Jeff's going to do really well. And, I mean, he's someone that is very likable, and he's going to get a whole bunch of confessionals. Does anyone else want to talk about Jeff? Before I we move love on? Jeff. Well, Elise I loves Jeff. Jeff Steven loves Jeff. All right. Jack, do you love Jeff? If not, you're in the minority, and we hate you. So I do like Jeff. I just – I remember when they had, like, the show where they, like, showed everyone getting picked, and I remember Jeff was, like, really, like, overweight and big. So I hope that doesn't, like – like screw him up in the beginning where he's just not like in enough shape to contribute to China. And that thing is he has him and Kimmy, I think both have put on a little bit of weight, which, you know, the, the, the Twitch summers podcast isn't saying like, that's a bad thing. When you get older, you put on weight. That's just what, that's what humans do. We're all not going to be 20 and beautiful forever besides me, but <laughs> that's a whole different like thing with like vitality and like drinking blood. Or, anyways, it doesn't matter. Jeff Varner, you know, he has gotten older, and I do agree that some wear and tear could actually cost him his shot at a million dollars. Okay, so go ahead and finalize that pick, and then I believe I am next. All right, so I'm clearly going to go with the male because I do want to kind of balance it back and forth, and there's no way in heck I'm going to really pick any of the females left because I don't think any of them have a shot at winning. I'm going to go ahead. You know what? Ooh, I'm trying to think, should I do my yellow pick? Because I always yellow pick, and my yellow picks have served me good in the past. Should I do my yellow pick now or later? I'd say do, do you... it now while you get the chance. Do it yes. now? Okay. Cause... Yellow pick. This player 
almost won me Survivor San Juan del Sur pick him. Oh, God. Oh, we had to oh bring, my God. We oh, had my to, God. We had to bring Elise into the filming that season, and she caught, she snagged it at the very, very end of the Jacqueline pick. So I'm going to go with Keith. Okay. Wow. So here's what I'm going to say is this. If Keith is not one of the first two or three players voted out, he will go far. There is no reason to vote him out between places fourth and, like, 15th. But who does Keith get along with? Keith, the thing about Keith is if you notice from his season in San Juan del Sur, he kind of got along. He didn't, he was never BFFs with anyone, but everyone kind of liked him a little bit. And I think that's going to be just enough to when Tribal Council comes, people are going to go, should we vote out Keith? And they'll go, no, 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 let's vote out Spencer. No, 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 let's vote out PG. No, no, no. Let's vote out, let's vote out Vitas. What? Let's vote out Vitas. Vitas. Let's vote out Vitas. Maybe, we'll see. I mean, Vitas is going to win, so I mean, I don't care. Your words mean nothing to me. Vetus is going to win. Keith's going to come in second. I'm going to make you all look like idiots. All right, so Elise, you wanted to say something about Vetus. Or not Vetus, Keith. Vetus. <laughs> yeah. For an instant. Go with Keith. Keith. Um, I'm not a big Keith fan. Okay, I... moving on, Alec. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to say that you have no right to tell any of us that our picks are terrible if you're picking Keith. Um... I almost beat everyone by picking Keith in Survivor San Juan del Sur, and I picked him at the end of episode one. And I also picked Wu at the end of episode one of Kagiyan. So my picks are actually pretty darn good. I think all my picks have always made the merge. And besides Aris, they've all actually done really well. And Aris's brother Vetus will hopefully take me into the homeland again. To be Yeah, Jack, we all know you picked Tyson one time, all right? We get it. Then you also and you also picked Kelly Wentworth, so I don't want to hear. It. You picked Ooh. Kelly way back in the day. So, anyways, I finalized Keith. Um, there's not really much to say about him. He's hit or miss. I think he's. I really do think he's going to hit really well. Yeah, Alex Cash. We know you. You suck at pick him. All right. So let's go ahead and let's move on to the next person, which I believe Stephen. You get the next pick. Um. Okay. So this next pick. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Stephen gets the next two picks. So. Okay. So my first pick. Um. This is actually someone who I've actually kind of soured on as sort of a contestant. Um, but I think it's another situation with Amber, or like we've brought up earlier. So to sort of preface this sort of – I'll say who I'm picking and then I'll say why. Okay. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to pick Kelly Wentworth. Um, I'm not – if you had asked me this question, how I felt about her after San Juan del Sur, I would have said loved her. One of the great pre-merge boots who had untapped potential. Fantastic. But I've – I've sort of soured on her. She just seems very... I don't know. There's something off about her. But I do think she's going to fit in well with this cast. Because, specifically, of Amber Alert. People are going to be like, eh, she was the fifth boot on her season. And people were just wacky that season in San Juan del Sur. So I don't think people are going to peg her as much of a threat. I think because of that, Kelly Wentworth is pretty a pretty good lock. I'd say to at least make Merge. I don't know how much further than that she'll make it, but I definitely see her making Merge. Okay, that's interesting. Does anyone have any rebuttals? Just go ahead and speak up. If you have something against I mean, Kelly Wentworth, because I okay, go ahead, Jack. So I'm a Kelly fan because I did pick her uh, on her season, but I think one thing that's gonna screw her over is I think she's gonna come into the season playing really hard because yes. she got screwed over I by her dad, that. and she got kind of screwed over by she wasn't playing as hard as everyone else, and she got left out of the big group. So I think she like has this chip on her shoulder or this attitude like, oh, I need to like play well and be a strong player and then just like vote herself out of the game pretty early on. I hope it doesn't happen because I'm a, I like her on TV and I think she was like interesting to watch, but I just, I'm afraid she goes like too ham. Um, mm. I could very much see that happening. Yeah. All right, Steven, um, who do you think uh, she would even work with the honor tribe? I, uh, she's on Takeo, uh, which I believe is green. So I think she's probably going to fall into the Spencer, um, who else is probably there? I'm going to guess Spencer, PG, Shireen. I think that sort of sect is going to pick up Kelly Wentworth. Um, also just another reason why I picked Kelly. She's the biggest, uh, Baylor fan on Twitter. She okay. mentions Baylor. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We, we gotta stop. <laughs> Sorry. Baylor's awful. Okay, Steven, you get another pick. Go ahead and let's do this. Um, okay, so uh, second pick, um, I, I'm, I'm debating going with my head or my heart here, um, but going with my heart has screwed me over in the past, so I think I'm going to go with my head here. Um, so I'm picking this person 
because I like them on the whole generally. Um, they were a lock to return. I figured it would be this season. Um, I, I, I definitely think that they're a lock to make the merge. I don't know how much further than that. So I'm going to pick Golden Boy for whatever the frig point oh he is, uh, Joe. Joe, and yeah, Elise's right. heart is broken because Elise wanted Joe. Look at her face, guys. Um, listeners, you can't see Elise's face, but it is one of a child whose heart is broken. Um, picture like a Christmas where they received no presents. That's what Elise's <laughs> face looks like. Okay, so you think Joe is going to make merge? I think – I would... don't agree. I think he goes right before the merge. I think – I think even if he does, he racks up enough confessionals because he's the newest, you know, star, for lack of better phrasing. I, I uh, agree that he is a star, but I think there's going to be so much other drama going on that's not going to include Joe that it's going to kind of overshadow that. But I do think you make some valid points. So that's, yeah. I, I And I do think Joe is likable enough that he can find himself in a majority alliance at least early on. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not he can get past those first early merge stages. And I don't necessarily think he can, but he I don't think he has to, per se, for my fantasy team. I think he just needs to get there and be visible enough. Right. So he's sort of filler. Okay. Well, go ahead, Steven, and lock in those fantasy picks, and I'll go ahead and do my... Yep. All right, now it's my turn. I'm thinking about going yellow again. Do it. Do you guys want me to go yellow again? Yeah. Yes. Sure. All I hear is one from Steven. Elise doesn't get hair anymore. She's too busy being heartbroken about Joe. I can't see Jack. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm doing my – I've done a couple yellow picks that have been successful, and I'm going to combine them. I am going to be picking Wu from Survivor Call Kageon. Call Bam. It. I now have Wu and Keith, two players that have done me justice in the past, and – RS's brother Vetus, all right? This is a resurgence. This is the renaissance of my team. Now, here's what's going to happen with Wu. People are going to vote out Joe come merge. People are going to vote out Joe whenever. People are going to vote out Jeremy whenever. But here is the thing. Thanks, Jack. Here is the thing about that. Jack called me a sexist, and I'm still recovering from that a little bit. No one's going to vote out who. Yes, we're, we, we're, we're not going to talk about that. Inside Survivor did do a great piece about Wu, but here's the deal. Wu still got second. No one's going to target Wu ever at all until the final five, and he's going to get a whole bunch of confessionals, and he's going to enter ninja self mode, and it's going to be fantastic and amazing. All right. Do any of you guys want to lie to me and tell me why Wu could go pre-merge and Wu could be voted out early? Go ahead, Steven. Go I ahead. Think, I think a drawback Wu has – I think there's two main drawbacks. I think the first is that he's from Kageon, and I okay. think a season Very like fair. that, having four representatives, uh, let's see, you've got Wu, Spencer on the same tribe, you've got Tasha and Kath on the same tribe. I think if Spencer is in a majority position, I think Wu goes early, because people are going to be like, oh my god, we can't let the Kageon people work together, because there's four of them, um, and four in a cast of 20, if they make the merge, is a pretty, you know, I'd say it's a big issue. Um, and on top of that, I don't necessarily know if Wu is going to want to... I don't say I'm not want to, but I don't know if he'll necessarily keep up with the strategy because in Kageon he felt more like a loner going with the flow, and he did fall into Tony's alliance. But I don't necessarily know how that's going to fare for him in Cambodia. So I think it's going to fare for him making the final three. Okay, Alex, you want to say something real quick? Go ahead and jump ahead. Yeah, I think I think the uh, the fact that he has uh, I think the fact that he has three other Kageon. Uh, cast members in this season means that they're going to be targeted over him because I agree. I, because his reputation is that he's you know easily led for, if if that's the word I want to use and so whoever whoever gets control of him has a valuable thing in their pocket to take mm -hmm. forward and that's very fair okay so Elise you're next go ahead and make your pick. I think, I don't know, my, I love the female villains. I have, have to choose between two icons. All right. Um, oh, it's not me. It's someone else. Oh, it's not you? Who is it? Bayon, et cetera. Oh, I'm sorry. It is, in fact, Alex Cash's turn. Now, Alex, be sure to take the person at least wanted because that's the kind of day she's having. <laughs> 
I have two. Who did she I'll say okay. she won? I was kind of spacing out. She said she wanted one of the female villains. She didn't specify which one, though. Okay. All right. So, hmm. And we do only have a set amount of time, so. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take somebody new school since I had, um, so I think. I think I'm gonna pick Jeremy because he's he he's gonna he's gonna have a loud mouth in the confessional booth and he's going to play really hard, which was it which is probably not going to work too well in his favor, but well enough. Okay. Now let's talk about why that's not gonna happen. I think Jeremy is toast. I would be if he's not one of the first people voted out at merge, I would just kinda of be in awe. I think his mouth is gonna get the better of him. I feel like he's the kind of person where he, very much kind of like how people think Wentworth is going to go ham. I think Jeremy's going to go ham. I don't think Jeremy has the ability to emphasize or uh, empathize with people very well. Does anyone want to chime in on that? Stephen, go ahead. So I was a big Jeremy fan in Samuel Adelson. I thought he was funny. I thought he had great taste in allies. I do agree with you, though, Colin. I think in this season, he's going to come into it. He's going to play too hard too fast, and I think it's going to bite him in the ass. I think... There's a he. Pro, I think he makes merge. I don't think he makes it much further than that. And I think merge. He might. He might scrape by. Well, to get there. And, and I don't disagree about, with you. In yeah. fact, I completely agree. But you think? But see, the thing is, do you think he's gonna get a lot of confessionals? I don't think he is. I think he's gonna get one or two leading up to his boot episode, and then he's gonna try to take control and he's gonna get booted. And probably the reason why I don't think he's gonna last so long is gonna be the twist we talk about later in the season, because I think it's gonna mean the death for some players like Jeremy. All right, so moving on. Let's see. At least now it's your turn. Now it's my turn. Yep. And I think this is kind of. I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea, but I'm gonna have to pick Abby. I. Hmm. I love I well Philippines is one of my favorite seasons. I loved Abby. I thought she was entertaining. I'm hoping that she can close her mouth long enough to do well. I think if she finds herself in the right crew, she she's proven that she can outlast the other people. But I, I think she's fun. I hoping she can get in find friends and won't like go after them immediately. So. Well, here's the thing. I actually do think Abby has a good shot at making the finals. Okay, so Alex, do you need to say something? Go right ahead. All right. The uh, Just one Abby-related thought is that apparently she was she played most, if not all of them. Who's got the helicopter? Okay. Um, apparently Abby played most, if not all, of Philippines with a torn ACL. Yes. So, it would be really... Frickin' funny if she actually ended up being a challenge beast based on her ability to untie knots quickly in answer. <laughs> <laughs> and answer. That's a possibility. I feel like the challenges this season are specifically designed to not rely just on total brute strength. And I can see Abby is someone who, honestly, if she was voted out first, I would not be surprised. And if she got second place, I would not be surprised. Mm-hmm. Voted out first in the merge, I would be surprised. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah voted out first in the merge, I would be surprised I, as well. I just sort of jump in on that real quick i think what's been said is sort of accurate in that if if she she might not make it to the merge but if she does make it to the merge she's going for she's in like pretty like, good ride yeah. which yeah. i'm looking forward to if that happens no one's go, going after her i don't know she she's gonna be merge. like well we gotta vote out joe we gotta vote out spencer and we gotta vote out uh kimmy kappenberg who's here because you guys are idiots and think she's actually gonna last long um <laughs> Okay, so Jack, you get two picks, so go ahead and regale us. And these are your last two picks, so this will be the team you're locked into for the next, you know, five months, six years, or however long Survivor airs. I, I don't oh, know. Geez. Okay. All right, so I'm looking at my choices left. We have Andrew Savage, okay. Cass, Kelly Wigglesworth, Tasha, Shireen, and Terry. Quite quite the bunch to pick from. Okay. Um, I will go with one man and one woman. Okay. And my first pick is going to be Andrew Savage. Not bad. I'm actually kind of surprised he hasn't been picked yet, if I'm being honest. Yeah, me, me too. Um, I think he he's like an old school player, so I'm like hoping he does well. I liked him on his original season, and I think he's just the type of people, type of guy that like he can like corral the troops. Like he's like definitely that leader type. Like there's no way he's not gonna like be a leader on his tribe. And Jack, this is something else I kind of want to talk to you almost in defense of the idea that a man could win this season, which is that 
everyone looks at player like Andrew Savage and Jeremy, and they think, I want to keep them around because they're a giant shield. You keep someone like Andrew Savage or Jeremy or Joe around long enough, guess what? Final Five comes, and they bite you in the butt with that. Yeah, especially if, like, he's, like, the most athletic guy left. And, you, like, as we all know, like, once you get to that last stage, you can just need to win two challenges and you can be in the finals. Exactly. And so. Andrew's the kind of person that wins through our second chances. People in the jury would want to vote for him to win. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's very he, – he gets along with people. Right, so, so I'm locking in the Andrew Savage pick. Go ahead and lock that in. Let's go ahead and let's make your second pick. All right. This is my second pick – or fourth pick and last pick of the draft. Yes. And I'm sure to get some flack for this one once again. I'm getting ready for it. But I'm going to pick my old pal, Shireen Ascui. Mm. I'm actually... Okay, I'm not going to... Go I ahead, Steven. No, I, I actually... I, I'm with Jack on this. I don't think that's a bad pick. Okay. At all, actually. I don't think it's okay, a horrible here's the thing. pick. It's not a bad pick, but I'm going to do... We haven't done this in a while. Yes or no to every player... Does Shireen win this season, Elise? No. Alex? No. Steven? No. Jack? Probably not. <laughs> exactly. Shireen has no business even, in my opinion, being – well, okay, so you make a case she deserves being the season, but she's not going to uh, make it that far. She's going to overplay. She is doomed. She's going to be seen as annoying. It's going to tarnish her legacy. Steven, why do you disagree with me? Legacy? I, I, was gonna say, I disagree with you for multiple reasons. I think – she gets along quite well with most people in the Survivor community. I think she's very fun. Admittedly, you know, it does come off a bit annoying at times, I'm sure. But, you know, I think she's quite endearing. And I think if she gets onto a tribe with folks that like her, which I imagine her tribe does. Oh, I think yeah, she's who else is on her tribe? She's on the tribe with Spencer, PG, uh, Takeo. So she's Spencer, PG, annoying. Wentworth. I'm already Spencer. pitching the Spencer confessional. He's like, oh, my God, Shereen's so annoying. I... Huh. I I don't know. I I have I have good vibes about Shireen this season. I I don't necessarily know if she makes it further than she did in Worlds Apart, but I have a good feeling about her this season. Okay, well, that's fair. I guess. Does anyone else want to comment anything else on Shireen before we move on? All right, Jack, go ahead and lock in that pick, and I believe Elise is up for her last pick of the draft. Yeah, it's my turn. Uh, so we have some interesting <laughs> players. Players left here. Um, I'm tempted to go Kelly Wigglesworth just because of, uh, you know, original Survivor. But I think I'm going to have to go with Miss Chaos Cass. Okay. Uh, I could see her being the first one booted for sure, definitely. But I think she's shown to at least be strategic when she has to be. Um, I, I think... She might alienate herself, but people might want to keep that around. And the, especially when there's so many likable players, they have to be thinking about who they can beat. I don't think she's winning this season. She could definitely be in trouble because the other people from Kagian don't like her. But I'm optimistic, and I love Cass. So. All right, go ahead. Um, Steven, why um, is that horrible? Uh, first of all, <laughs> anyone who knows me and followed the podcast during Kagian knew I was one of the most fervent cast supporters. Okay, real quick, I'm taking a shot while Steven talks about cast, so go ahead, Steven. Go ahead, that's how, um, this is what I need to survive you talking about cast. That's why I have this shot set aside. I appreciate it. Um, I love Cass. I hope she does well. Uh, I think it's a situation like Abby. I think if she, if she makes it to the merge, which I don't necessarily have the highest hopes for, unfortunately, I think she goes pretty far. Um, I think if she falls into her old ways of people being like, oh, there's Chaos Cash. She's trying to chaos it up again. Mm-hmm. People are going to get sick of that and but, they're going to get sick of that quick. And anyone can answer this question. Your tribe loses. Survivor Second Chance, Immunity Challenge 1. Why is Cass not the first one out? Uh, she's on a tribe with... Uh, let's, let's take a list of the people. She's okay. on a tribe with Sierra. Okay. Uh, got... I think she's not necessarily first one voted out. I think she's she's got sierra she's got monica she's got savage she's got keith kimmy i okay, think okay you've got no two... one's voting out savage over Cass. i know but what I'm, sa- what I'm saying is that she but i'm just listening folks oh, okay i'm saying that the people the two people i can easily see going before her are sierra mm-hmm. and kimmy i think as much as i love kimmy and i want her to do well i think both her and sierra are arguably you know plausible first boots of that tribe before Cass. 
I wouldn't. I, mm, that's a tough sell for me. But anyways, we do have a lot of podcasts yeah. to cover. So Elise, are you happy with your cast pick? Are you happy? Who? What is your team? If you don't mind uh, saying it all out. My way. team is Stephen, Kimmy, Abby, and Cass. Okay, so Elise will be coming in last place <laughs> for this draft. Clearly. Um, all right, so go ahead and let's lock that in, and let's move on to our next pick, which I believe falls on the sexy Alex Cash. All right, I have three picks left, and I have highly specious reasoning for uh, my fourth and final pick of the draft, which is the kind of thing that typically you know, gets me into trouble with these uh, pick'ems. But YOLO, I'm picking... Terry because I see similarities with him and Heroes versus Villains Colby Donaldson which is to say <laughs> I do not see him reprising his challenge dominance from Panama and, that's and I think fair... he will be dragged a long way because of it. Okay. Here's what I'm going to say about Terry at least Terry is self aware enough and seems to be in pregame stuff that he knows he's not going to compete physically with Joe and I really do think Terry is going to do a lot more of the social game than people expect because Terry is a smart, smart dude. And he is – Terry could actually fly under the radar, which I think would be a great change to see him actually flying under the radar. Stephen, what do you think? So to sort of echo what's been said um, about – especially with Terry being the hero's villain's Colby, I actually think that was Colby's best because he was sort of washed up. He was sort of over the entire thing, but it, he still brought it every time. I mean he just like – it's like James said, he's Superman in a fat suit. And I think that if Terry sort of brings that sort of mentality of like, eh, I'm older, I'm probably not going to be the beast I was in Panama. Like, it might be fun to watch him. And I think he could go far okay. because of that. And that's the thing is, I do think Terry could go far. In fact, when it comes to the whole, like, Joe, Jeremy, or whatever, I think if Terry doesn't do something incredibly stupid, like try to take on a leader position, I think Terry outlasts a lot of those guys. I could see that happening. I think, Colin, the problem you run into with saying something like that is that it's Terry. So my <laughs> leadership position is going to come naturally to him, I feel like. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I don't know. I, I do think Terry was a good pick. And I'm surprised he hasn't been picked yet. Okay. So it is now officially my turn. And I have two people. I have between Kelly Wigglesworth and Tasha. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, these are... These are two picks I thought would... I, I, I actually thought would have gone earlier, but... <sighs> now, here's... Where my dilemma is. I think Kelly's going to get a lot of confessionals, but I don't know how long she's going to last. But you know what? I am going to go with her because she's from Greensboro, North Carolina, and I'm from Wilmington, North – well, I'm from the Outer Banks, North Carolina. I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. So we got to get that connection going. Real quick, I live in Wilmington, North Carolina, and so does Dreams. There is a picture of us together on the Facebook page. <laughs> and the other day I saw Dreams again, and we shook hands and talked for another minute or so. So bam, at least I talked to some Survivor players, even if it is just Dreams. Just kidding, You say it like it's a right, bad but, thing. Yeah, just kidding, Dreams. You know I really yeah. like you. So I picked Kelly Wigglesworth. Here's my thing about Kelly. I think – She's already playing the game. She's telling everybody that she's not, you know, pre-gaming or any of that good stuff. When it turns out, we have multiple sources saying, hey, Kelly's pre-gaming. Kelly's getting it going. And I think Kelly can fly under a radar long enough to make a severe impact on this game. I don't think anyone's dumb enough to take her to the end because you would clearly lose. But I, I don't know. I think she's going to do well. Steven, do you have a rebuttal to that? So not a rebuttal. Uh, I, I sort of am reinforcing your point. Kelly actually said in one of her interviews, they asked her what her plan was, and she said specifically that her plan was the no plan plan, mm -hmm. in that she's going in like sort of winging it, like it happens if it happens. And I've actually, I actually have been watching Borneo again to sort of prep for Cambodia, and she's got a really good like pulse on dynamics. I think, I think people really are going to see Kelly Wigglesworth as unassuming, this sort of just like granola hippie girl who's coming back, you know, all these years later, mm -hmm. just to sort of, you know, try it again, because yeah. why the hell not? But I think if she lures people into that false sense of security, she's going to freaking destroy them. Mm -hmm. And I want them to, I want, I actually, I want Kelly Wigglesworth to dominate. And honestly, Kelly Wigglesworth winning this season, being blood, if she won it in a very bloodthirsty manner, that would make me so happy. If she just see, lies back and wins, I'll be I, upset. But if she oh, gets see, bloodthirsty, I'll be happy I would love about that. that because I, I think it would be really refreshing for her to sort of have a, that element come back into the game of mm -hmm. like, I don't know that, that, but that's just a personal. Problem. I want to see her be bloodthirsty. All right, Stephen. So you get the last pick, and it's Tasha. So let's everyone. Let's just talk about Tasha real quick. I, I was if uh, so Tasha was actually my winner pick in Kagiyan. Mm -hmm. Um, I I'm a big. I was a huge Tasha fan. Uh, she was uh, 
she was a great character, great underdog. Um, though, if you read people's inside Survivor take on her, she was apparently not as um, humble or nice as we were led to. Yes, and edit. that's what, and I've heard that from multiple sources that she is not necessarily a nice human being. I wouldn't say she's not nice, but I would say she's definitely a little. Um, She's a little more self-assured. Um, but anyway, Tasha's a challenge beast. I think people generally like her. I think there are people that obviously don't. You obviously have Cass, who's probably not too keen on her, and they're on the same tribe. But I think by virtue of the fact that Cass is Cass, God bless her, um, I think Tasha would win out in a scenario of the two of them going against each other. And I That's think if that even happens. Um, I do right. want to highlight, jump to Alex real quick, because Alex has been raising his hand, then I have something to say to Jack. Anyways, Alex, go ahead. All right. One thing from the uh, one thing from the preseason commercials that I think uh, dovetails with the way that Tasha, the the things I've heard about her, and I think might feed into the uh, her storyline into Second Chances was I believe she said something like I'm gonna do as much backstabbing, lying, betrayal as I need to, and then I'm going to pray for forgiveness. Because people have mentioned her religiosity Mm -hmm. and, you know, like bordering on God wants me to win kind of thing. Yes, and that's what I've heard as well. God picked me to win Calgion. Yeah, and that's not going to fly well. Yeah, and I think people, she could, Tasha is the kind of person that if she steps out of her, the role people perceive her as, She's cut down quickly. All right, Jack, you want to say something? Yeah, I remember during Kanye on, everyone was like, oh, Tasha's such a goddess. She's winning all these challenges. <laughs> but she always seemed really smug to me. Like, she knew she was good. And I don't know if she, like, talks down to people, but she just has, like, that air of confidence and, like, she believes in herself too much or something <laughs> like that. Um, but, yeah, if she's definitely, like, saying she wants to be a villain and pray for forgiveness, no one's going to buy that. People yeah. want you to like own up to who, you, like, how you're playing, and not like use religion or like as an excuse. Or it just exactly. you gotta you gotta be who you are. Mm-hmm. If Tasha's a smug individual, Tasha... then it's not gonna yeah. go over well. And I don't think she's gonna do too hot. Anyways, Alex, uh, real quick, I want you to name your team. We're gonna have everyone name their teams, and then we're gonna talk about the twist this season to wrap this baby up. Okay, Alex, who's your team? All right, Monica, Jeff Varner, um, Jeremy. And Terry. Okay. And then, Steven, what's your team looking like? Okay, my team, if my computer will load quick enough, that'd be... Yeah, because mine's messing up too, so... Um, okay, so my team is PG, uh, Kelly Wentworth, Joe, and Tasha. Okay. And then, Jack, what do you, who do you got for your team? So my team is Sierra, Spencer, Andrew Savage, because you can always got to throw the Savage in there, and yep. then Shireen. And I give my team a solid B. Be, I, I don't know. I feel like everyone's team is good besides Elise. Um, no, in all fairness, my team could be in trouble early on because my team is Vetus, Keith, Kelly Wigglesworth, and Wu. So, I don't know. I feel like I have a good little underdog team. You have team. a lot of gamble picks. Yeah, I have a lot of gamble picks. Yeah. I think, I think you know, all four of them could be in the final six and I could look good or they could all be out early and I look like an idiot. We'll see. So, moving on. Let's talk about of the two major twists this season. Okay, first one. Hidden Immunity Idols are now at Challenges. Woo! Now, this is something a lot of us have been talking about for a long, long time. And here's the thing. When I first heard it, I was super excited, but now I'm a little worried. Um, how is that even going to work? It's like you're going to have to find that clue for the challenge the next day. Like, I don't know. It seems like there's a lot of things that could go wrong with it. Um, Steven, go ahead. I think from what I understand, there's a... There's a clue at camp. I'm not necessarily sure if they get it at tree mail or what, but from what I understand, there's that. And when I guess it's attached to the challenge apparatus or something, so it's you know it's hidden in the challenge or something. And I think it's to the degree that like obviously you have to go for it in public, um, but to the point that if obviously if it's in public, you know your tribe's going to see you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think from what I understand, if the idol is found i'm gonna guess that there's not a new one hidden until it's played or if someone's voted out with it okay but i don't necessarily know if that's the case so okay. and also the idols this season will all look differently which does add an extra oh, yeah. layer when it comes to bluffs so that's really good alex go ahead all right where i th- where i think that an idol will be hidden 
and I will be surprised if at least, if not even one idol is hidden in this manner, inside a bag of puzzle pieces. Oh, okay. And so you're dumping it out on the table, and then you notice something that doesn't look like a puzzle piece, and you got to grab it. Okay, that's, smart. that's interesting. But then so that means if you get the idol clue, that means you got to volunteer for the puzzle piece part of the challenge. Yeah. Oh, to God. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to make things really, really interesting. I don't know. To me, it seems a little too kind of twisty. Like, okay, the only time we can get the idol is at this exact point in time. But, I mean, these are all-stars, quote-unquote, so I think they're ready for it. Does anyone else want to comment on that? Elise, did you want to say something? Go ahead. I think it'll be interesting if people start picking up on where the idols are hidden. If they are, like, in the puzzle pieces, maybe we'll see more people volunteer to do puzzles. Maybe we'll have people fighting over who gets to do what in the challenge because they're looking for where the idols might be hidden. Okay. And then, Jack, did you want to pop in and say something? I think it could be interesting. I'm just thinking of, like, if I was on Survivor and I was doing a challenge and I didn't know about this, and we're carrying some, like, giant, like, a wooden log, and all of a sudden I look over and some guy's, like, twiddling with a knot, and it's like, come on, like, what are you doing? And I feel like it's got to be somewhere where it's, like, not completely, like, weird, like, yeah. This guy's like, what is he doing over there? Like, hey, it's 50 feet challenge. away. What the fuck is this? And he's, like, digging a, he's digging a hole, like, 10 yards, like, to the left. Yeah. Well, the thing is, they could make it like that, and then it's like, do you want to actually have a challenge, do you try to participate right. in a challenge, or dig it up? And I'm glad they're kind of doing it to where it's going to be hidden within the game. I could see myself being like, oh, cool, I get to volunteer for the word scramble, even though I'm horrible with words, just to get a shot at the uh, idol, so we'll see. Okay, so that's one of the twists. The other big twist is the fact that we don't know when exactly this is going to happen, but what we assume is going to happen early on. They're going to divide from two tribes into three. Which I think that could spell trouble for players like Jeremy and all that jazz because I think suddenly on the smaller tribe you go, hey, we're merging tomorrow. Let's get rid of Jeremy. But hold on. Does anyone have any criticism of this idea? Because I think it's absolutely perfect to go from two tribes two tribes to three. Alex. Alex is rocking on. Steven, what do you think about this? I really like the, the division from two to three. I think it's – I've always been a fan of three tribe se- well, I shouldn't say three tribe seasons because I was I didn't like all stars, but I like the three tribe format. Mm-hmm. I think it's really interesting. I think it's really nice when you have a tribe of six because you have less people you need to get to know per tribe, um, and you sort of get more fleshed out dynamics. I feel in mm-hmm. tribe of six, and, and I mean we assume that it's going to happen at eighteen because that seems like a logical place, but we don't know. It could happen at fifteen. It could happen, you know, at nineteen with someone going to exile who we don't really know the dynamics, but I mean, come on, it seems likely at eighteen. And another thing about it happening this way is it basically guarantees we're going to have three tribes to merge because they're not going to go from two to three back to two and then merge. Right. Okay, at least what were you going to say? Oh, I just thought that Stephen brought up an interesting point about where I'm a big fan of the three tribe format during regular seasons, but I feel like all stars it gets tricky because you want to see your favorites do well, and I feel like people might be tar- like the big threats or our favorite players might be targeted just because they don't really have a room room to hide. So I'll be interested to see how that will affect mm. the, this season, which is kind of a all stars light. Uh, so at least you think that this three try format would actually help the Ambers. I think so. Okay, and I and I kind of agree with you on that. Does anyone else want to throw in anything out there about the three tribes? Um, I think it's going to be interesting and cool to watch. I hope that it doesn't end up in the way that I'm thinking it will, where it's like if it happens too early, I feel like people might default to like people they know beforehand. Ooh, I didn't think I that, that makes a lot of sense. You're not in a tribe of five, and it's like I know two of these people are two of these people are already on my tribe. I'm just going to go with them. Like mm-hmm. I. I just don't want it to be like... You don't want to see the tribe be like, oh, it's going to be Cass, Wu, and Tasha voting out Savage and Fishback or whatever. Yeah, I want it to be like some way to like... There's like like a cool blind side happening or like a new new group forms Mm -hmm. and not just like, oh, I'm already with these people and now we have the majority automatically. But the merge is going to be exciting. Yeah, because... No matter what. People, you're not going to know like who's forming bonds with who because you're not... Like, there's two more tribes you have to worry about, not just your own. All right, guys. We have talked to death about this season. I'm going to give anyone the opportunity to step up on a soapbox, and then we're going to wrap things up. This is going to be a fantastic season of Survivor, I am sure. But even if it's just a pagonging, we have such a good cast. And, I mean, mm-hmm. just listen to our drafts. Listen to who we're talking about. Like, this is a Survivor dream come true. All right, so any soapboxes anyone want to stand on before we wrap things up? No? All right. I think everyone um imported – Gave, I'm sorry, everyone gave great input tonight, and I'm super excited to see this. And listeners, we are the Torch Snuffers Podcast. You're like, you guys have changed names a bunch of times. 
First off, calm down. We've only changed names twice. And second off, we are the Torch Snuffers, and we will remain the Torch Snuffers until infinity and beyond, until I get famous and win Survivor Season 34, roughly, and then get voted out early in Survivor 35 because they know I'm such a big threat. All right, I want to thank everyone so much for listening. I also want to thank Jack, Stephen, Alex, and Elise for joining me to talk about Survivor, and I can't wait to... Can't wait to do this for like what seven years? How long does Survivor last? How long does the season of Survivor last? It lasts a long time, <laughs> so it's going to be fantastic. All right, everyone, have a wonderful night. Bye. 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 Yeah.